Hey everybody, it's Jeff from New York and today we're back in Florida, Orlando, Florida to check out SeaWorld. SeaWorld is right off of International Drive in Orlando, right between the Disney parks and the Universal Studio parks. International Drive is a mecca for hotels, restaurants, and shopping here in Orlando. I did a video about uh, two or three weeks ago. I'll leave a link in the description below. This visit to SeaWorld is one of the last places I recorded on my trip to Orlando, my 10-day trip, and boy were my feet tired. I took my time walking through the park, it's a thorough walkthrough, and uh, I did that knowing that I had plenty of time before my flight left later in the afternoon. Little did I know that getting an Uber back to my hotel to pick up the bags once I left the park would be almost impossible. I made several requests for an Uber ride, uh, all promising to be 10 minutes away, but after over an hour I realized I was not getting back to the hotel this way. Many of you may have heard there's an actual shortage of Uber and Lyft drivers, and that's making it very difficult to get a ride uh, in time, or a ride at all, I should say, anywhere in the country or in the world. I'm heading to Vegas in a day or two, and I actually rented a car, which isn't easy either. They're very expensive. Rental cars are in shorthand as well, because most of the rental car companies sold their rental cars during the COVID crisis when there was no demand for them. Now there's a huge demand and the companies have no cars. Anyway, to make a long story short, or perhaps it's too late for that, I uh, saw a yellow cab of all things, Jeff from New York. I jumped in front of it, flagged it down, and begged the driver to be his next fare. I was, he drove very fast, and I made it to the airport on time. Life is good. But I digress. SeaWorld, that's what we're here to check out. Lots of rides, lots of shopping, lots of food, lots of little fishies, lots of big fishies. Let's check this place out. Now my plan of attack to visit this huge park and walk through it is to enter where we did at the lighthouse. There's lots of shops and rental places here uh, and work our way around the park clockwise. I don't know why I always do that, but that's the way I seem to walk every park. I walk in, I make a left at like say six o'clock and I work myself all the way around until I'm back at six o'clock again. And of course, uh, sometime during my journey around the clock, I visit the middle as well. As I said earlier, I've been in Orlando for 10 days now. This is my 10th and last day, and I've been to m many parks, uh, whether it's Disney or Universal Studios and SeaWorld, of course, today. And out of all of them, this is the longest wait I've seen for the 10 days. I have not seen lines like this at Disney or Universal Studio. So I finally made it in. It's been about a uh, half hour that I had to wait online, and it turns out that you do need reservations to visit this park as well as pretty much any park in the country right now. Lots of these people did not make a reservation, so they're kind of clogging up the entry area trying to desperately make reservations on their phones last minute, and it doesn't seem to be working out. I've said it on countless videos in the past, if right now if you're planning on visiting a park or an attraction or a restaurant, make a reservation. It won't hurt and it'll probably save you a lot of time right now. Lots of shops here at SeaWorld, let's check this one out. As I dig deeper into all the clips I have, the video clips that I took here at SeaWorld, I'm coming to realize that this video is probably going to be a two-parter or maybe even a three-parter. Uh, it's just way too much material. Uh, you don't want to watch an hour and a half of SeaWorld, I don't think. So I'm going to break it up probably into two or three parts. Uh, I hope you enjoy part one, which is what we're watching now, obviously. I've mentioned before, if you're uh, taking a plane to and from wherever you're going, don't buy snow globes because they don't make it past TSA. Obviously they're filled with liquid and if it's more than a couple ounces, they're going to keep it and you're going to go home without it. These are kind of small, so I don't know, maybe, but uh, what, if you really want to collect a snow globe, just have the shop mail it to your home.
Salt Life, a very popular brand, it says that it's a SeaWorld exclusive, so I guess they only sell Salt Life merchandise here at SeaWorld, or perhaps their t-shirts? I don't know, this seems unlikely, but that's what the sign says. This is Freddy the Fish. He's hiding somewhere in this huge park called SeaWorld. Be the first to spot him. He can be quite elusive like all my other mascots. And leave a comment below at the timestamp where you spotted him and you'll get a shout out on an upcoming video. Whatever you do, don't eat him. From what I understand, he's loaded with mercury. I call him Freddy Mercury. This blue roller coaster that keeps showing up in my shots is called the Manta and uh, the website says find out what it's like to spin, glide, skim and fly like a giant ray when you experience the only flying roller coaster of its kind in Florida. 
Riders are taunted by a headfirst face down inverted nose dive, and that's just the beginning. Experience the full force and power of riding the high seas, all on one of the smoothest tracks in the world. I did say skim, the ride actually skims across a waterway for the grand finale. Right now we're heading towards the uh, Stingray Lagoon and Feeding Area as well as Dolphin Cove, but before we go there, we're going to pass a couple of shops here as well as uh, Captain Pete's Hot Dogs. Who here remembers puka beads? Boy, am I dating myself. Some more Salt Life t-shirts. I should have picked one up, although I don't really do any fishing. I used to when I was a kid. My dad used to take me deep sea fishing off of Miami. I not only come into all these shops to uh, check out what they have to offer, but it's a great time to cool off too. Across the way there is Captain Pete's Hot Dogs, but for now we're going to head into the Stingray Lagoon and Feeding Area. You're allowed to pet the uh, stingrays and it feels kind of like a fine grit sandpaper or perhaps a cat's tongue. How do I know what a cat's tongue feels like? Well, I've been licked many a years by these two guys, Tom and Jerry, my adoptive cats. Hey, wait a minute. Wasn't that Australian alligator guy, I think his name was Steve Irwin, wasn't he killed by one of these things, like stabbed to death by the tail? That doesn't seem too safe. Leave a comment below if I'm mistaken. And it looks like here we have the Stingray Nursery, little tiny ones, you know, future murderers. Off in the distance you might see some dolphins jumping, that's Dolphin Cove we're heading over there right now. Uh, it's a dolphin encounter and you can watch them feed as well.
let's take a walk around this lagoon to see if we can get closer to these beauties. So I kind of get this, I'd do some tricks too for a good burger. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button and smash that thumbs up, it really does help the channel out.
Maybe it's just me, but I don't find manatees cute at all. Now, I know they're endangered and there are people who just love manatees, but to me they look like blimps that can barely move their flippers. But I respect all living things, so rock on, manatee. By the way, the area we're in right now is called Turtle Trek Aquarium. And from here, we'll head over to the Manatee Rehabilitation Center shortly. And yes, there's lots more to SeaWorld than just fish. There's plenty of rides and food coming up later in the video. I don't know about you guys, but I could watch fish all day long. It's better than any drug available at the pharmacy. It can lower your blood pressure and help you fall asleep, and it's just great for the mind and body. Besides, they taste really good. Here we have SeaWorld's Dolphin Days, a regularly scheduled show of dolphins, and uh, I was going to check the show out. I was in between shows, and I was going to come back. It's a good thing I didn't because of that whole Uber situation when I left the park, and I am on a schedule today because I have a flight to catch. So maybe next time I'm at SeaWorld, I'll catch this show. In the meantime, let's check out some of these rides. This one here is called Journey to Atlantis. This exciting flume ride roller coaster hybrid treats you to more than a chair of surprises as you explore dark, watery passageways through the sunken city before being flung from its gates down to a thrilling plunge into the waters below.
And here we have another aquarium at SeaWorld. So that's pretty much it for part one of SeaWorld here. Uh, when I know we've seen a lot of fish, but in parts two and perhaps even a part three, we'll see lots more uh, rides and shops and restaurants, including the Antarctica section, the Sea Lion and Otter Stadium, Shark Encounter Aquarium, the Mako Roller Coaster. They have a Sky Tower here, Infinity Falls Water Ride. There's a uh, Orca Encounter. Uh, Sesame Street Land and Wild Arctic, a lot of stuff to still see here, which is why uh, it's impossible to get it all into one video. So stay tuned, look for part two. I hope you enjoyed part one. Look for part two coming up shortly and uh, perhaps even a part three here at SeaWorld. And now it wouldn't be a multi-part video without a cliffhanger, would it? So the cliffhanger is, will Jeff eat fish for lunch here at SeaWorld? Does SeaWorld even sell fish to eat? And does Jeff make his flight? This and many other questions will be answered in parts two and perhaps part three, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, ask some questions, and most importantly, subscribe by clicking on the button on the left. You can visit all of my New York videos by clicking on the top right, or check out my videos on other favorite places to visit by clicking on the bottom right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the city.